suppose you have a circle center at zero zero of radius r. So that means this distance is r from the center to the end point. The equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So this will allow you to solve for x, y in terms of um, a trigonometric function. So for instance, if I were to draw a inscribed a triangle inside this circle right here. So let's suppose that's my triangle. And this line that I'm dropping from the point perpendicular to the x-axis, it's going to be right here. Let's call this distance x since it's parallel to the x-axis. And this distance that we dropped, we're going to call it y. Then this is r because that's the uh, distance from the center to the end point of the circle. Now we know from uh, trigonometry uh, that a Pythagorean's theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So that's how we got this formula right here. Another thing to know is that we also know our trig ratio defined in this, um, using this triangle, we can say that the cosine of theta it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent in this case, so since this is across from theta, y is the opposite length, x is the adjacent length, and of course, r is the hypotenuse. So knowing that we can say that cosine theta is going to be x over r, in other words, we can say r, x is equal to r cosine theta. So there you have your uh, definition for x in polar. Similarly, for sine theta, you can do the same uh, idea. Sine defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So that would give you opposite is y over r. And then if you solve for y, multiply both sides by r, y is going to be r sine theta. So there you have your definition in polar for the y coordinates. So any point that is given x comma y, you can convert them to polar coordinates by using this relationship. Because polar coordinates, we want to find r and we want to find theta. Let's go ahead and write the Cartesian equation for the given polar equations. So let's call this one question one. This is two and this is three. So for the first one, well, we know that r cosine theta, that's simply going to replace x. So we know this is x equals two. And there you have it. That's the Cartesian equation for our cosine theta equals two. Now this is a vertical line. That's x equals two. So if you were to draw that, you can draw a vertical line. So we can draw this. This is not so difficult to draw. So x equals two. So let's suppose this is two. So that will be the line described in the xy plane. For the second one, we're looking at r sine theta equals negative one, but we know r sine theta is y. So for number two, you can say that this is y equals negative one. In other words, this is just the horizontal line at negative one. So this is a horizontal line at negative one. Again, you can draw it if you like to, but um, finding the equation is um, important. Drawing, we all know at this point, so I'm going to leave that up to you. Now let's take a look at the last one. So for this one, um, so we're going to have to manipulate a little, but let's take a look at this right here. Our cosine theta, well, we know that's x. So I'm going to replace this with x. So my equation is now r squared is equal to negative 4x. And I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. So it looks like the following. You'll have r squared over negative 4 is equal to um, x. Well, now let's play around with this a little bit. So it looks like um, I can replace this piece right here, r squared. So we know that from the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, where the circle is centered at 0, 0. And I can replace these guys for r squared right here. So my equation becomes the following. So I have x squared 
plus y squared, replacing r squared, divided by negative 4 is equal to x. Well, now we just need to manipulate this and play around with it so we can identify what kind of shape it is. So it looks like I'm going to move back the negative 4 on the left-hand side. So that was a useless step we did. So I'm going to just rewrite it this way, x squared plus y squared is equal to negative 4x. So sorry about that. I didn't realize we didn't have to do that. Now I'm going to move negative 4x to the left side by adding 4x. So you'll have x squared plus 4x plus y squared is equal to 0. And then now here, to identify what kind of shape this is, we're going to complete the square here. If you need to review how to do completing the square, I will leave a link in the description box for you to review. So for completing the square, we're going to take half of this b term right here. So that would be 2, and then we square it. So we have uh, half of 4, that's 2, you square, you get 4. So I'm going to add 4 here, but I also need to maintain equality, so I also add 4 here. Rewrite the rest. Now this will factor into x plus 2 squared, and then we still have y squared is equal to 4. Well, now we can identify what kind of shape this is. This, this is a circle centered at negative 2, comma 0, and radius 2. So that's the shape of this equation. Now let's practice writing Cartesian equations into polar equations. So for the first one right here, let's call this 1. Let's call this 1, 2. So we have x equals 7. Well, we know x is r cosine theta. So you can write this as r cosine theta equals 7. So there you have it. That's your equation in polar form for this one. For the second one, uh, so we know x squared plus y squared. Well, we know that's r squared. I'm going to replace that with r squared is equal to 4. And then we can take the a square root on both sides. Don't forget your plus and minus. So r is equal to 2 and negative 2. So it's a circle of radius uh, 2, or I can think of a negative 2 as well. So these are the two equations in polar form.